Welcome to my house. Buck here. We're back with another video on the beginners series, Techniques 2. Um, we're going to talk about specifically lure fishing, hard baits. Hard baits on this one. I was going to try to put it all in one video, but I think it's a little bit too much um, because the video ended up being too long. I want this, you know, I don't want you guys to fall asleep while you're watching this stuff. I'm going to keep it short, try on this one. So we're going to break it down a couple videos here. Um, Tonight, we're going to talk a little, mainly we're going to talk about lure fishing, hard bait fishing. That would be your buzz baits, your toppers, your crank baits, um, your spoons, uh, spinner baits, spinners, all, all your hard bait. We're going to talk about, we, we basically have four different retrieves that we can do uh, when we fish with these lures. And I'm going to explain each one of them. What, what I know about them, you know, that's you know, just me, Buck. I'm going to explain to you guys. I'm going to let you know what I know about it. And we'll go from there. And I'm down right now in Florida. I just finished up down there. All of them fish down there ate all my bait. So I thought this would be a good time. You know, I unfortunately, I'm on a small account here. So that's why I want to break this up a little bit. Well, because when we start talking a little bit more in depth about the surface plugs and, and, and the rig systems, I, I'm probably going to move over to my level 80 account where I got the gear to actually show you guys because we don't have it yet here at level 33. That's for sure. All right, but we're going to do we we're going to take we're going to take on these lures right now. The hard lures right here. We can get over these. We can get over the different retreats that we have here. Now, what we got in this game, if you're lure fishing, you basically got well four slash five different retrieves. That you can do uh, with a hard bait okay you've got the just straight pull um, actually the small the, the low one if you go on to speed one you're going to get what's called a slow and straight um, and again guys I, I now explain this more in depth it depends on the way to that lure and we'll talk about this a little bit once we get down on the water here and we start looking at what we're doing here but you basically have a what, if you're on a one speed, with we're going to use a casting spoon for this for this uh, experiment here, so to speak. So you've got a casting spoon on there. You put it on a one speed. You just mash the button down and pull it. Um, that's pretty much called a slow and straight. And that's what you're going to get. It's going to pull it across the top of the surface. Um, depending on where you start that from, you know, if you let it sink to the bottom, it started, and of course, it's going to pull it up through the water column, and eventually will come to the surface. So it'll pull it slowly on a vector up to the surface till it gets there. That's slow and straight. Now, if you bump it up a speed on your retrieve speed, you, uh, what you'll get out of that then is just a straight, and it'll come up to the surface really quick, and it'll stay on the surface, and it'll just pull across. So now, if you have the slow and straight, or the straight speed now that's good for your your toppers your buzz baits um a lot of your spoons you can pull that way your spinner baits some of your rigs and we'll explain the rig setup in another video that's your soft baits we'll explain those and your spinners so you can use that particular retrieve for for those hard lures right and then you have what's called uh in this game we got what's called a lift and drop now lift and drops normally for bottom fishing, uh, you normally run that with bass jigs, uh, jerk baits, uh, your rigs, your spoons, because you can lift and drop a spoon off the bottom. They're heavier. They sink to the bottom right away. A jerk bait sinks, so it starts at the bottom. Um, a crank bait will float unless you yank it, then it dives. So that's different. That, that, that's a different lure, different style. So if you throw a crank bait out, it'll float until you start yanking on it, and then it'll drop. And that's why we have our crankbaits are listed 3, 12, 6, 23 feet. The minute you start yanking on them, it's all about how big that bill is on the front of that crankbait. If it's big and wide and knocked down at a hard angle, that's a deep diver. She's going to dive deep on you right away, right off the bat. And that's, we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, we don't have a whole lot of different crankbaits here. You can't see them because they're so small. You can't tell the difference in the angle of the bills. Um, but take my word for it, um, that's basically how they make it, how they adjust it. In the old days, we used to have little metal. <laughs> we, we used to have metal 
bills on them. And so you only had to buy one. And if you wanted to fish it shallow, you bent the bill up on it a little bit and it fished shallow. Uh, you wanted to fish a little, and they, they were made out of a very pliable aluminum. You know, and you didn't sit there bending them up and down all the time, but you know, some of them you had bent for deep diving. Some of them, now you can't do that because they're all plastic bills because they realized they needed to, you know, they needed to sell more lures. So we can't take one lure and make it fish every depth of the water column. That would be too convenient for us fishermen. You know, so now we have plastic bills you can't adjust. So you have to buy different ones. So bigger, wider, downswept. That's all going to tell you as a fisher person <clears throat> where that lure is going to ride in the water column. That's how you buy them. All right, so we're going to go over that a little bit. So we're going to go over the lift and drop. Lift and drops mostly, like I said, were for spoons, uh, bass jigs, stuff like that. You can bounce off the bottom when you're fishing for bottom fishing. Okay, then you have a twitch. We have a twitch in this game. And there's many opinions on how to perform that twitch um, in Fishing Planet. There's the gamer's way, and then there's the fisherman's way. And of course, Buck will only be talking about the fisherman's way. All right, so we have the twitch, and then we have the stop and go. And, you know, all of these, if you're talking about the lift and drop, if you're talking about the twitch, if you're talking about the stop and go, it, it's not that particular retrieve that attracts the fish, believe me. Um, it's the hesitation, knowing when to put the hesitation in. And we'll talk about that when we're on the water. Hesitation is everything in fishing. Um, you, you, you get an attention of a fish, dropping it in there, giving it a little jerk, making a little splash, uh, get the attention, and then you pull, 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 pull. And that fish is going to watch it, watch it, watch it, follow it, follow it. And he's waiting for the opportune time to strike and pounce. Now, all depends on what fit type of fish you're fishing for, whether or not the hesitation is more relevant or not. Um, trout, not so much the hesitation, it's a steady pull, hard, fast. They're fast running fish, they're fast hitting, they're fast striking. Um, and trout are finicky in the streams and all, you throw, if you're fly fishing, then the hesitation's everything. It floats on the water, but it's moving, so it's always in a movement state. Trout are those type of guys. They don't hit on dead stuff on the bottom too much. They like the salmon eggs. You, know, you can always get away. There's always exceptions to the rules. <laughs> All right. So we're going to, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to jump down on the water. I'm still here in Florida. We're going to jump down. I got a couple of doors rigged up here and we're going to go through um, the, the, these different retreats. All right, guys. So with that, I will, oh, I didn't even put you guys over on the water yet. Oh, well, we're waiting for it to load up. Come on, there it is. All right, there we go. All right, we're down here. We're we're the Everglades. We're gonna drop down there. Buck's gonna get us down there. Uh, I haven't been there yet, so it's gonna take a while. I'm gonna pause this till we get down on the water. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, folks, working on it. We're here on the water now. All right, we got some sun in our eyes over here. So we're mainly concerned over here. We're, we're not really caring. I, we're not worried about catching fish, okay? We're, we're, I wanna just try to go over these retrieves with you guys. So you understand what you're dealing with. So I got a, I got a quarter ounce, one out hook on there. All right, and the, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is the slow and straight. So the slow and straight is going to be on your retrieve one speed. If you look down at the bottom right, where I got circled, it's okay. It's on the one speed. Okay, so we're going to throw out there. Um, Buck, use your, use your target so they can see. I normally don't use this. But okay, we're going to throw out in this hole over here. Okay, see where that little hole is over there? It, it really doesn't matter. I don't, I don't think we're going to catch fish. It doesn't matter. We're going to throw out there. And basically going to... All right, as soon as it hits the water, we're retrieving on a one speed. Now, it already sank that quarter ounce, which is not heavy at all. Look at that, we got ourselves a fish over there. Okay, well, damn it. <laughs> not what I wanted. I thought this was going to be a good point at the time. All right, probably won't catch no fish here. We're not on a peak. All right, um, but basically, all it was with that, as soon as it... 
the um, lure hits the water, you start cranking, it's a number one speed, and you just, come on now, get in. Messing up my video, dang it. All right, okay, okay. All right, so let's try this again now, dang it. Take her a little shorter this time. All right, so we're in there now, it's down. All right, I let her hit the barbell. So if you just stay on it, one speed, now, if you, I let it drop all the way to bottom. I didn't get on it right away. Um, so it's going to slowly come up through the water column. Just a straight and steady. And that's what your straight and slow is. It'll eventually come to the surface. And this <clears throat> this method is good for, as you saw, I mean, I just started yanking it with a straight. And it all depends on the bait to hit when it hits the water, you know. But these, this is a good method for your toppers, um, your buzz baits. Yeah, we almost had a guy, you know, he almost hit it right there. If I would have hesitated and stopped my draw, he would have hit that. Okay, so this type of this type of return is, is very good, like I said, for your toppers, your buzz baits, your spoons like we have on here right now, um, your spinner baits, and your regular spinner lures. So, you know, depending on what prey you're looking for and what lure you got on there, um, this this will work, especially if you're in uh, a low peak time, uh, weather's hot out, like we're, we're at 73 degrees right now, water temperatures at 60 degrees. We've got a high barometric pressure right now, which is good. I mean, that's that, that's good activity for the fish. Now, I don't know when this changed. I didn't, you know, I didn't have time to look at that. I, I haven't been paying too much attention to that. Okay, so that is the straightforward. Now, if we kick it up, um, that's slow and straight. Kick it up now. I look down on the right. I kicked her up to two now. So we're going to throw her back out there again. All right, we're going to start yanking on it right away. Got another one. Okay, so that was what's called the slow and straight. Not just straight. That was slow and straight. And we didn't even get to work it, but all we're basically we do, and we were pulling a little faster. So all that's going to do is bring it up, uh, no matter how far you let it sink. And of course, now remember, if the lighter the lure, the longer it takes to sink. Okay, the lighter the lure, the longer it takes to sink. So <clears throat> it depends on where you want to fish the water column. Um, for these guys, whether you want it to sink halfway down, all the way down, um, if you want to start cranking right off the bat, as soon as it, now, unfortunately with Fishing Planet, it, they don't move fast enough for buck. I'd like to be cranking. Sometimes I want it to hit the water and never sink more than about seven or eight inches. Um, it's very hard to do that in this game with any lure. I found it very difficult to get one to actually sit other than a walker. Now, we're not going to talk about walkers in this video because that's a whole different breed of fishing and I want to, that's one of my favorite ways to fish in this game because it's one of the most productive ways to fish in the South American waters. So, I'm going to dedicate an entire video to walker fishing in Fishing Planet because it, it, it's, it's a little bit different. So, we'll take that on in, in a separate video. But, so, remember this. Um, Weight, weight of your lure determines how fast it's going to sink. Now, while we're on this subject, um, I'm going to go through the rest of them. We already talked about the, the slow and straight, and we talked about the straight. And something I want to talk about, and then we'll talk about the rest of them, is when you're in water with current, right? Now, this means a lot. Pay attention. Write it down. When you are retrieving your lure with the current with the current in other words the current's flowing right at you you're throwing out and you're pulling back with the current you need lighter lures have your lures sink faster so if you want to be able to move that bait move that lure with control you've got to go with a lighter lure so you have more control so it doesn't sink as fast because the water flow itself will push it to the bottom all right so remember that now when you're facing the other way and you're throwing downstream and you're pulling upstream you can go with a heavier lure and 
The reason being that is you can play with that lure because the current will keep it up. So you can go with a heavy lure that sinks more because a lighter lure is going to dance all over the place because of the current flow being stronger. Than, so you beef up on your lure if you're fishing that way. Get a heavier lure on there and then you don't have to you don't have to play with it so much. You can control it up and down, put it anywhere you want in the water column. So always remember that. If you're if you're pulling with the current light, if you're coming against the current heavier, you can go heavier lures, bigger hooks. So if you're if you're out chasing something and you know you're facing the wrong way in these game in, in these waterways, you're forced if you want the lure to stay off the bottom and be able to maneuver it, you're down to a really small hook that may not be suitable for the fish you're looking for. So you need to reposition yourself in your boat so you can put a heavier lure on bigger hooks and it'll float in that stream for you. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that, that it sinks so much because the current's going to help keep it up. All right? We're going to talk about that. That's all right. All right. So now the next thing we're going to talk about is the lift and drop. Now, this is not exactly the bait lift and drop. Let's see, Buck, do you have, oh, you have one real quick here? Can you change this out real fast? Oh yeah, there, there we go. We'll just put a bass jig on there real fast. Now this, your bass jig is for, now you can fish a spoon this way, or normally you fish your bass jigs, uh, the lift and drop, you want your bass jigs, your jerk baits, your rigs, and spoons if you want to. Um, but the way this is going to work, we're just going to throw them out there again in the same hole. Oh, you went a little far there, Buck. That just went right off the dock now, didn't it? Quit using that damn thing and just throw it out there. There we go. That target thing messes me up more than anything. All right, so now we got her. She's on the bottom. Okay, now we're still set at number two here. Um... And you can get a lift and drop out of a number two. There, there. Oh, oh man, you guys just ain't letting me alone here. All right. So you saw how easy that was. A little lift and drop with a bass jig off the bottom. That's all it takes. These bass, that's what they look for, bass jig. I, you know, and this is a raw bass jig with nothing on it, guys. I, I mean, I didn't even tap a, you know, trail it with a worm or a nymph. Like Micah likes to tip, tip all his off with a with a nymph. I like to use a worm myself, especially for this particular lure here. I like the chocolate worm or the uh, rattlesnake worm works real well. All right, so let's try this again. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to throw her out there. And we'll throw her a little shorter so we don't hit the honey hole. Let her drop down in there. And again, it's just a matter of bouncing it. You're just bouncing it off the bottom. That's what a lift and drop is. But, you know, it's this kind of stuff. It it basically imitates uh, like a crawfish or, you know, something that's crawling across the bottom. And a crawfish, you know, now, I hope I'm going to talk about this and I hope you guys are watching and you see what I'm doing because I'm going to talk about this and see if anybody paid attention because I've done it on every single retreat. All right, let's get this guy in. All right, so that's your lift and drop, all right? That's a good one there, and very good for bass fishing. It's very good for crappy fishing, you know. Um, and we'll get into it. Unfortunately, in this game, you can't hook up a Carolina rig or something like that and put a live minnow on it, which would be a great thing to do. But, you know, we've got rubber rubber things in the game that mimic our minnows, our grubs, our, our, our shads or slugs so you have ways around it but i'd still love to be able to put a live minnow on a jig head bounce that lift and drop it across the bottom i think we would catch some really good stuff all right let's move on to the next one here the twitch all right now this is going to be change bait again oh not the shift key bucket key okay we'll do the we'll do the casting okay let's do a heavier We'll do, a, we'll do a heavier casting spoon this time so you can see the effects of it a little better. All right, so now, the twitch. Now, if you guys have watched my videos coming up, you know I went, you know, I went crazy over these guys that tried to teach you how to do a twitch. 
uh, you know, with with the rod sound. Let me throw this out there first. Look, box, that's not where we're going now, is it? Up to the hallway. Right. He's got to teach you to just throw your <clears throat> put put your rod tip in the air and just we're snagging on something there. Uh, now it's not going to react right. Let me get it in. I snagged her. All right, put your rod tip in the air and then just, you know, stop and go. And that's a twitch. Ah, uh, that's not a twitch. Oh, discard. I don't think we're keeping the plastic bag. Come on. All right, so we're going to throw her back out there. A little shorter buck. All right, now on the twitch. What? Now what's the back? Come on. There we go. All right, on the twist. Let's keep it running so we don't get snagged up. Okay, now. Oh, man. Okay. All right. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, sorry about that. The fish get in the light. All right, we're going to try this again. Get a rock. Now. So that you start twitching it, you're going to catch fish. All right, so we don't let it hit the bottom. The, and basically the twitching is the combination of your right and left mouse buttons and one thing nice about a twitch is you know when you twitch especially if you're fishing for pike with a crankbait and you use this theory you know you can hold a crankbait steady just by just by hitting the right mouse button and twitching it you can hold a crankbait steady But all that is, you're bouncing, you're bouncing that lure up and down, and you can, you can slow twitch and give it hesitation, and then you can bounce it a couple of times and get her cranking up and down a little bit, and that's your twitching. And that, I mean, you saw that when I first threw it out there. I mean, I just, I twitched it like three times, and he hit it that fast. We're down there, we're halfway. Whoop, we don't want it to get all the way to the bottom, so you know, right away we pull it up with that. You get your rod dip up in the air and you got him okay now what I recommend so twitching and then you saw the stop and go it's basically any one of these combinations and you stop doing it all right well I would eliminate the stop and go and here's here's what Buck says about everything um, you want to add you, when you're fishing, you want to add all these retrieves in to your retrieve. Every bit of it. Every one of your retrieves should include a combination of all of these. All right, guys? Folks, it should include a combination. You have to feel the area you're in. We know where we're at here. Lily pads right away. You know, you drop down in the water. It's not very deep here. You don't have a lot of room. The fish are high concentrated in the water column. So the thing of it is, is, and what gets fish the most, folks, what gets them the most, you can you can do all these combinations. It's the hesitation that forces the bite. Ninety-eight percent of the time, it's the hesitation when you stop doing what you were just doing for just that second. But when you stop doing it, don't give up your alertness because that's when the fish is coming. All right, so when you're you're all alert when you're dragging and pulling, and then you stop and you say, "Okay, beer time or this." Don't no, sip your beer, or whatever you're doing, while you're dragging. When it's time to hesitate, be on it because that. And if it's not right when you hesitate, it's the minute you start it, the the motion again, is when that fish is going to strike because they're watching it. You give. Yeah, they're watching it. They're following you as you're twitching along. You hesitate. Now they, they're, they're looking at their opportunity to strike. And either they strike then, or depending on the type of fish you're hunting for, that next very move to them is that bait getting away, and that's when they'll strike. The very first second. So the minute you start to tug on that again, be prepared for a strike. Don't miss it. Right? Throw it out there again. But we talked about all these. So the way Buck does it is I do a combination. 
All right, and I'm kind of I'm doing a lift and drop here, and then I'm, I'm kind of twitching the front end of it, and then I'll pull her straight for a while. Just let her sag. Give that hesitation and let it float in there. Boom. That's it. That's the hesitation. All I did was, I didn't pull the raw, I didn't pull the lure in anymore. All I did was hit the right button and bounce the front end of the lure up a little bit. Let it sit right where it was, just bounce it, and he hit it. Come on, get in here. We're going to finish this video up. It's 26 minutes. It's way too long. All right, guys. There we go. We'll grab it. Right. Over here. So, we covered all of them. It's a combination, guys. Combination of everything. Feel your prey. Feel what you're doing. Know your waterway. Know your streams. Know how your lures are going to react. And you'll get way more production out of it. You don't always have to yank fast. You don't always have to yank slow. Sometimes it's, it's a dance. You have to dance with these guys. That's why I say in my earlier videos when I used to put up the neon lights. Let's dance. Because it is a dance. Ma'am, can I have this dance? And go for it. All right. I hope. You guys got something out of this. If you did, remember to hit that like button. Hit punch the subscribe button. We need a couple of more subscribers, guys. Come on. You're watching my videos, but you're not subscribing. I need you. Never ever give up the fight. We'll see you later. Listen to the